All right, let's move to uh, a important conversation next, which is America's AI plan. Uh, this was unveiled by President Trump uh, just very recently, a couple of days ago. Uh, the plan has 90 plus federal policies. Uh, the key moves include uh, exporting full stack AI tech, uh, fast tracking data centers, cutting AI regulation. It has three pillars, and we'll talk about those pillars. I'll just hit on pillar one, and then we'll pause to discuss this. So the first part is rescinding old regulations and reviewing state-level rules that show AI, that slow AI development. So get rid of the roadblocks. Number two, promote open source AI models for startups and research, and then uh, invest in worker training and retraining. Let me just hit these, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Pillar two and three, Streamlines data centers, chip factories, energy uh, projects. So basically, you know, allow for rapid permitting to build things as rapidly as possible. Um, and we'll invest in nuclear and geothermal uh, power and secure data centers for military use and exports US AI tech to our allies. Alex, this sounds like uh, a war footing in the global AI war. Yeah, I I, uh, I I read the AI action plan, and and my sense is this is potentially the the broadest U.S. industrial strategy that we've seen since President Eisenhower, since the the interstate highway system. And uh, I'm also reminded uh, this this anecdote that's that's in the historic literature that in 1939, Niels Bohr, this is prior to World War II, Niels Bohr and and to the Manhattan Project. Uh, told Edward Teller, the father of the, the hydrogen bomb, that building an atomic bomb can never be done unless you turn the United States into one huge factory. Mm. And it appears to me this AI action plan is more or less doing that. It's, it is a plan to turn the U.S. into one huge AI factory. Dave, what do you think about it? Well, I, I think we're incredibly lucky the way the timing lines up with a single administration. I'm not political at all, but uh, but we have continuity, like we're not even one year into a four year term now. So this is the roadmap. We can le at least rely on it for three and a half years, which is exactly concurrent with the AGI explosion. So this will, this at least we know this roadmap won't get overturned by the next election and thrown in the trash, you know, just because the last regulations literally first sentence in this document throws everything that we just did in the garbage and starts over. And that's one of the great flaws in America, right? Is this lack of continuity, but here we're going to have continuity for the time window that matters three and a half years. So, you know, the, I, I think it's just an incredible miracle that David Sachs got recruited into the government mm -hmm. and that he took the job. Cause if you look at the authors of this, they're actually really brilliant people who know what they're talking about, which is pretty damn rare in Washington. Yeah. And so uh, I want to get I, Michael I, Pratt so lucky. You know, I want to get Michael Kratzios, who's uh, one of the authors here on our pod, or to join me at the Abundance Summit. Uh, you know, this represents, uh, first of all, there's no congressional approval required. This is all being done by executive order. And so this is not a matter of if, it's a matter of go, go, go. Uh, getting rid, I mean, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but we are so far behind the energy curve. Uh, required to to power our AI revolution, uh, and we've heard this. We've heard Eric Schmidt say this in our last podcast, Dave, where we're not chip limited in the United States. We're electricity limited. We're power limited, and so this is like let's double down on nuclear and geothermal. I, I note that this action plan did not go heavy on solar, which I'm still you know like scratching my head on because. Uh, as we as we know, China has gone all in on all solar and everything else. Um, mm -hmm. But the ability to like just wipe away the state and federal regulations that slow things down on building. Uh, I mean, if we're going to compete, this is the time to pull out all the stops. Yeah, well, I, I would point out, too, that we're not chip limited because we're importing everything from Taiwan, but Taiwan is still manufacturing, what, 80, 90% of the GPUs driving all of, of AI. It's all from TSMC, single point of failure, one company. And it is such a huge national priority to get new fabs, but also new fab company or get Intel rebuilt. Um, but we need some diversity in that area. And because we're going to solve the energy problem. I, it's an acute problem, but we'll solve it. 
But if the chip supply gets disrupted by, you know, a Chinese invasion of Taiwan or otherwise, that's going to be the real vulnerability. And I think it's pointed out in this document. It's not really highlighted too much, but it's up there in bullet one as a, as a critical constraint. Alex, other thoughts, please. Yeah, maybe the, the bookend to the uh, t- to the Bohr comment uh, that uh, years later, it, it's reported that uh, after the Manhattan Project and, and after the country was uh, in many ways uh, strip mined in, in order to facilitate collection of enough re- refined U-235, uh, Bohr uh, apparently told Edward Teller, I told you it couldn't be done without turning the whole country into a factory. You have done just that. Uh, and I, I think that's the race dynamic we find ourselves in. Uh, and uh, whether it's one particular energy source or another, I, I think energy sources that can't be uh, assembled in time for this this super intelligence explosion, uh, e- even though they might be more ergonomic over longer time scales, if they can't be provisioned, permitted, and deployed very quickly, they may be obsolete. 